Okay, welcome to part two. Oh my gosh. Like I said, I'm primarily making this because I've felt really disconnected from my audience for quite a while. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I, I feel like I've slowly sort of drifted away from the Dinotube community and that community in general has grown a little thinner and less close knit than it was, at least from my perspective. Um, and so I just, I, I feel like I wanna make something where I can go more in depth and be more honest and personal and just kind of tell you guys everything that's going on and kind of uh, just reiterate stuff that a lot of people probably already kind of know, but um, I just want to go through everything and kind of acknowledge the backstory and the lore up until this point. So I've, I've got some notes here so that I'm not completely unscripted and, and, and unfiltered because otherwise we'll be here for just ages. So um, there's no need to cover the first three seasons of Dinosaur Island and all my YouTube history around that period of time. I was a small child, I made them with no ambition of what they would become or where I would go with YouTube and Bionicosaurus. They, it was just purely for fun and that's fine, that's it. That's the whole story. The relevant story really starts around early 2017, I believe, which is when the first teaser trailer for season four of Dinosaur Island uh, came out. And thus the uh, season four hype train, as it was called back then, left the station. And that was a very, very formative time. And a time I look back on now with a lot of nostalgia and fondness. And in general, it's it's a very, it was a very lightning in a bottle situation. You had the season four hype train occurring, and I don't want to take full credit for that being like the catalyst or anything, but that was just kind of one thing that was going on. Um, and then also live streaming was becoming a huge thing with like me and Camo and other people in the community. We were all kind of hopping on that, even though obviously live streaming had been an option on YouTube for years before that. Um, it was kind of a new medium to us, and it was a new outlet to interact really one-on-one -on -one and live, of course, with fans and with your audience. And it felt like, in general, that time period of primarily, like, summer 2017 was really fostering a lot of community development. And the community felt really energetic and connected through that time period. And it was a magical time. I look back on it with again, very fond, nostalgic memories. I don't regret any of it. I think it was a fantastic period of time. I'm also very much okay with how things are different now, and I guess we'll get more into that as we go on. So, one thing that sort of resulted from that awesome time period um, was, you know, because there was so much energy with the community and because people were so uh, so hyped over season four and so hyped over a lot of other people's series and everyone was working on stuff, I felt really inspired and really free to be ambitious, which in retrospect was kind of funny because I was at the end of my teen years almost, and uh, it was right at a period in my life where I was about to transition into like a early adulthood and uh, going to college and stuff. And so it was kind of funny that that was the time period where I thought I could get really ambitious with this one random hobby. But it didn't really feel like a hobby at the time. Dinotube was my life during that period, and Bionicosaurus was my identity. And again, we'll touch more on that as we go along. But uh, point being, you know, there was a period where I was like, oh yeah, we're going to do season four, season five, uh, season six. There's going to be like a Bloodtooth prequel and a bunch of spinoffs. And it was just crazy. All my ideas, they were so ambitious and so over the top, and there were just too many. <laughs> Uh, but at the time, you know, it seemed doable, it seemed possible, and, um, and I was very excited about it all. And then the first big gap was quite a bit later, um, in between episodes 4 and 5 of season 5 of DI, uh, there was a fairly big gap between those episodes, and I don't even think I was uploading much in general, and that's because I was in a very depressive, low state in my personal life at the time, which I won't dive into, that's not not important. Um, what is important is how it related to and how it sort of fed off of my general lack of motivation that was just beginning to develop. As I mentioned in part one, my motivation to make Dinosaur Island and to really treat this channel as a full-time thing and my inspiration to do that stuff has been dwindling for ages. 
and I think it was that first gap where something in my personal life really kind of triggered stuff um, that kind of kind of spurred things along and, and got me to realize that man this is getting stressful this is kind of becoming an obligation and my passion for this series is starting to wane a bit and that was kind of the be that was the beginning of the deterioration and the next how many more episodes after five were there i guess just the two um six and seven i think six came out fairly quickly i know seven took a while and then obviously seven was two years ago and eight still doesn't exist and i'm now no longer uh, no longer no longer actively working on episode eight as i mentioned in part one of this yeah if you haven't seen part one it's, it's mildly important might want to go check it out um but anyhow um and through those last few episodes of season five and, and even earlier i mean part of it too if i had kept going with like season four level production quality i might have been fine but the level of production quality i was trying to achieve with season five um just being one person solo working on this project in retrospect it's not super surprising to me that that wore me down and so it, it was a big combination of of things going on uh on the one hand there was just some general burnout from just the amount of time I'd been working on the series with very little breaks and there was sort of a component of just wanting to work on other things and not having as much time because it's not the only facet of my life YouTube is not the only thing I do and never has been even though it kind of felt like it back then and I certainly thought of it as being very important and we'll get more to that later as I keep saying about everything um uh, on top of motivational stuff, inspiration is also a big thing. Like, there's so much baggage to the series because the first few seasons of Dinosaur Island are, you know, just literally me playing with toys as a child and they're so much older than everything else. Um, you know, it's always tied to that. No matter how ambitious uh, I am about things or no matter, how, no matter how proud I am of, like, a particular episode of Season 5, this series still comes from something fundamentally, uh, you know, very fun and charming now, but not something I'm particularly artistically proud of. And it's very weird sometimes realizing that it's not only in the same canon, it's literally the same series. It's this sequence of seasons. It's a direct continuation. And that does wear on me sometimes. And in general, you know, I'm working on novels. I have other series on my channel and lots of other hobbies. And in general, my artistic passion has just been very divided. And as time goes on or as time went on, it just slowly kept creeping away from Dinosaur Island until, you know, we've we've gotten to the current point where I can somewhat cynically say I'm basically out of passion for Dinosaur Island. I don't really care about the story that much, which might sound really harsh and might be sad for people to hear, but it's the truth. And, uh, yeah, essentially it's been a combination of all that stuff. But as well, a, a big component of this too, I mentioned identity earlier and obligation. And those are two sort of intertwining components of this as well. I really over, uh, in my head, I sort of overestimated the importance of things and I began to develop this fictional layer of importance and external, extrinsic obligation that just didn't really exist. At the end of the day, beyond pleasing a relatively small but still really nice dedicated fan base, there really was no obligation to do any of the stuff I was doing. This is just a YouTube channel. Sure, I made I make money off of it, but it's not a job. It's never been close to something I could live off of. <laughs> Nowhere near. And so it's always been a hobby. And while those times where the community was really alive and where I was really active were super fun and super artistically fueling and motivating, they also sort of allowed me in my head to create this false level of importance and this false uh, layer of obligation that really didn't exist. And a big part of getting to the point now where I can finally say, I'm deprioritizing Dinosaur Island and that big ambitious stuff indefinitely and that's okay. A big part of me being able to accept that and make that decision was accepting that a lot of that obligation really wasn't real. It was just fabricated and it developed naturally but it developed from my own personal insecurities and stuff and not like any sort of real life obligation, not anything external to myself. And then there's identity, which was a whole different thing. 
For years, I was Bionicosaurus. My home, my home was Dinotube. My magnum opus was uh, Dinosaur Island, which is funny to say. And my identity was Bionicle Source. That's who I was. I was so involved with the community and stuff. And again, this was a wonderful time period. I don't regret any of this, but just, you know, the way I psychologically kind of reacted to it, I really took it on as who I am and what I was about. And that was part of why I felt so obligated and why the stuff felt so crushing and like such an important weight over my shoulders for so long. And it's funny saying this now because I'm sure a lot of people are probably going to be kind of like, really? Like, you didn't need to take it that seriously. Like, I didn't realize that. And I know it doesn't actually make sense. But that's where I was for years from the beginning of 2017 when that sort of movement of the community really becoming more connected and stuff started all the way till about 2019. And that's, you know, then COPPA happened and COPPA was a weird blessing in disguise, a weird silver lining that I never would have appreciated at the time. It allowed me to separate myself. Since then, I, I don't feel like it, the community has really been the same. From my perspective, it's just gone, honestly, but I understand that it is still there. It's just different people and it's in different places. I'm just not much of a part of it and I'm completely cool with that. I love when I was part of the community more actively, but now, you know, I'm, I'm just okay with how things have developed. I think it's totally fine. Things change and I'm, I'm happy with all of it all the way through. Um, and yeah, Kappa was sort of a blessing in disguise for me because it allowed me to get away from Bionicle Saurus and remember, oh yeah, I'm Gibson and I have a life and I have other interests and passions and hobbies and other goals. And it allowed me to just gain perspective that I desperately needed at that time. And that leads us to this point. Uh, relatively recently, I was still caught up in the obligation. And like I said in my last update video, I had reached this point where I was kind of giving an ultimatum for myself where I was like, okay, either you just need to finish Dinosaur Island like as fast as possible, just dedicate like a year to just finishing season five and writing the book and just saying goodbye to it and just closing the door, or you need to just cancel it and say it's over. And that, I think, really goes to show how seriously I was still taking it, that I felt the need for, like, one of those extreme options. And then Aiden, again, and I talked to my other friends, too, like Eric and David and such, and they were all super helpful, but Aiden really just encapsulated it where he was like, if there's something you don't have to do and you don't want to do, you don't have to do it. Which I, I talked about this a little on, uh, I think, the first episode of our podcast, uh, Indecent Composure, which you can go check out if you want. Not child friendly, but I thought I'd shout it out for anyone interested. And, uh, and that is such a simple point and it's so obvious in retrospect. Like, duh, if you don't have to do something and you don't want to do it, don't do it. But it was something I really needed to hear. I think in particular, just hearing out loud, you don't have to do it, is something I really needed to hear. And so now I've reached this point where I am finally perfectly okay with saying, I'm not working on it anymore and that's okay. And I'm not closing the door. If I want to finish it one day, I'll totally do it. But just for now, I'm just like, yo, I'm not working on Dinosaur Island right now. The project is inactive at the moment. Uh, I have no idea what will happen with it in the future and that's okay. And this leads us to the final thing I want to mention, which is just, what does this kind of mean for the future of the channel? Because obviously Dinosaur Island is not the only victim of me, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> taking the bold move of, of not making YouTube my entire life. Uh, <laughs> uh, my whole channel has, has changed and I'm a lot less active and a lot less frequent in uploading stuff. And in general, I'm taking the same attitude that I take for Dinosaur Island to my whole channel. Not that it's deprioritized, because it's not. The channel is still the channel is still active in general, although it's not super active, but I'm I'm continuing that um, that concept of just, I have no idea what will happen in the future, but that's okay. I'm done with these big ambitious plans and these big goals. I'm just taking it one step at a time. It's a side thing, it's a hobby, and that's that's what it should be. And so, you know, if you asked me what realistically does the future of the channel look like, I'd say, Hopefully some more toady in the coming months. No plans at any time to stop how I Safari reviews. Other than that, I have no idea. And that's that's perfectly fine in my opinion. So I hope that all makes sense. Um, I hope you feel maybe a little more uh, enlightened and like I'm maybe letting you in a little bit more on like exactly my reasoning behind this stuff and just kind of my personal journey with this. It's just something I wanted to share. Again, I feel really disconnected from stuff and that's not necessarily bad. Like I'm okay with not 
being so much a dino tuber anymore <laughs> and just being a YouTuber again and just being a single person who's not really a part of a particular community. I'm perfectly okay with that. I think this has been a positive development for the most part. Um, and again, it's allowed me to gain a lot of good perspective. Um, but the one downside is that I do feel less connected to my audience in general. And I feel like I just don't know my audience as much. So I just wanted to put something like this out there. Um, the final thing to say is uh, just the comment sections are an open book on both parts of this update. Feel free to ask whatever. And also, I want to live stream at some point soon. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when, and maybe it won't even happen. I'm not sure, and that's okay. But I would kind of like to just to interact with people even more, answer more questions. But I'm going to try to let these two videos sit a little bit, just to make sure everyone has really seen them. So, um... Well, everyone meaning my regular viewers, at least, and maybe some other people. Um, <laughs> but anyhow, that's about it. Uh, if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting over the years if you've been a longtime fan. And if you're new, then welcome. You've you've come across the channel at an awkward time. But yeah, I, I think this is an incredibly positive development. Just me being able to actually say this feels really, really good and go into all this stuff in depth and hopefully for the last time. So yeah, I am so, so thankful for all the support that I've gotten over the years and just all the success I've had with this channel and all the things I've learned from it. It's been an amazing experience and I hope it will continue to be an amazing experience for as long as this channel exists, which will maybe be forever. Who knows? So anyhow, uh, thank you very much for watching and I will see you all next time. Ooh.